I don't think what she's saying is scripture. Mabel, what you're saying in scripture? That ain't scripture. I'm not even real sure it's anatomically possible. We've had extensive experience in the church world, and uh, we would love to use that experience to help you grow. $175,000 for repairs? We'll be left with a half-empty building with extra resources, and we could share those resources. Uh, I think that Terry should come and stay with us. Who will you lay down your life for? So are you sure? It's so big and open and new. Yeah, but does it come with a new pastor too? If you don't stop it, it may come with a new deacon. Think of it, Lamar. Think of how the church can grow in here. I'm excited. Well, the only thing I'm excited about is not having to pay $175,000 worth of repairs. Come on, let's sit and wait over here. Pastor Lynn should be here in a couple of minutes, and she says she wants to talk to the both of us. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, don't worry. We'll get some shopping done and maybe grab some lunch. That should put us back here in about three hours or so. Okay. See you then. Be safe. So where is she now? She had to go up to Atlanta for an emergency hospital visit. Good, so we can go home. I, there's some great NCAA games coming on. No, we're going grocery shopping and then you can take your beautiful wife out to lunch. You have some money? Your money. Then can we go home? No, then we're coming back here. End of story. Man, I've missed every NCAA game this year. Hey, Deacon Hall, how you doing, hey, man? Hey, Brother Timmerson, how you doing? Man, doing well. How about yourself? Man, it's been a long Mrs. Hall? time. It has. Am I interrupting anything? No, no. Man, you're looking mighty dapper. Well, the love offering has been pretty good this revival season. I'll say. So what brings you to our neck of the woods? Well, I just took a chance. I might get a chance to see you. Oh, is the senior pastor in? No, she's in Atlanta making a hospital visit. And she'll probably be gone for a while. Why, did you need to meet with her? Uh, no, actually, I wanted to speak to you about a pretty delicate matter. Are we free to discuss that? Sure, go ahead. No prying ears? Well, Gina's in the back in the pastor's office making phone calls. Mary, would you like to go back in the back and make some phone calls with Gina? Yeah. No, don't make these claws come out on you today. Deacon, go ahead. How can we help you? Well, we. perhaps we can help each other. And I'm, I'm not one that listen to what's on the grapevine, but mm -hmm. it's been said that you might have some misgivings about the direction your church is being taken in. Lamar, have you been out there grumbling against Pastor Lynn again? No. Well, I may have said something to a couple of friends. <clears throat> a couple of friends. 
I am so disappointed in you. Listen, when the church is the only thing that a man has and it starts crumbling around him, I think he's got the right to complain and grumble every once in a while. And I can certainly relate to that, uh, but I may have a solution. Hmm. Well, go ahead. I'd love to listen to your solution. Well, here's the situation. It listen may be to the solution, not blab it all over the place. Don't pay any attention. Go ahead. Here's the situation. It may be similar to yours. Some of our folk, including the pastor, has gotten into this juke and jive stuff. Mm. Uh, guitars and drums, waving flags up and down the aisles, and dancing. Man, it's just not dignified. You got to be kidding me. Dancing? Yeah. Uh, it just might be called praise and worship. Honey, what are you doing here? You are supposed to be at home resting that knee. Honey, you should listen to your mother. How much rest do I need? I needed to get out. I was driving by and saw the car outside. Thought you two might like lunch. Should we continue this conversation later? No, no, no. I want to hear this. Finally, somebody who sees things the way I do. Sees things the way he does. We, uh -oh. like We're the only the ones. Uh, excuse me, ladies. Can you please be quiet and let the deacon finish? Uh, like I was saying, some of our folks just don't appreciate the old ways. Quite frankly, man, I think they've lost their ever-loving mind. And if this type of madness doesn't stop, it's going to ruin our church. Same thing that's happening here because of this new pastor and her clowning around. Wow. Dad, it would do you well to remember the only reason I'm back in church <laughs> is because of this new pastor. You know that's true, Lamar. Okay, okay. But can you please just let the deacon finish? Yeah, we were perfectly happy with Pastor Diggs until he decided he wanted to go on this retreat, say he needed to hear from the Lord. I'm not sure who he heard from. But just say when he got back, our ways were no longer his ways. Man, it's like he brought back some type of disease. Disease? disease. Pouring out your heart to the Lord in praise and worship. That's a disease? Now let me Honey, tell you something. Calm. Calm down. Gentlemen, times are changing, you know. Calm down. Gentlemen, times are changing, you know. Mm. And that change is called God taking us up higher. Higher. Now look, you two, this is a conversation between men, and I thought you two liked to listen. Well, listen when you start saying something good. D, please continue. Well, to make a long story short, the board is going to remove the pastor next week, mm. and then I'll be installed as pastor. Congratulations, you're gonna make a great pastor. And I think you'll make a great head deacon too. Maybe in a year or two, maybe assistant pastor. We need to get people back in church that's gonna restore the traditions of the church. Wow, now that's what I'm talking about. How about you come by after the pastor leaves, meet with the other deacons? You can count on it. I'm excited about this. Man, things are finally looking up. Yeah, good, man. I'm excited, too. Uh, well, look, I got to run. I'll see you next week. All right, pastor. Oh, I like the sound of that, man. I like the sound of that. Wow, let me put that in my calendar. That sounds great. Uh, next week. Let's see. Deacon Raglan, we didn't know you were here. I'm glad I was, because what I heard certainly didn't sit well with my spirit, and I am sorely disappointed. Not as disappointed as I am. I'm beyond disappointed. I'm ashamed, ashamed of my own father. Who do you think you're talking to, young lady? I'm your father, and the Bible says that you are to honor your father. Oh, we want to use the Bible when it fits our needs. Well, what about the part that says, honor those who are in authority over you? Elena, I am as upset as you are, but he's still your father. But he wants to throw away Jeremiah's house so he can shine. Shine? Young lady, let me tell you something. You okay, everybody, let's just calm down. Dad, do I have to remind you that that could have been me in that sex trade? Me, your own flesh and blood, just gone. What do you mean, it could have been you? Now that's a long story, but the Lord was about to use it for his good. 
And when everything... And you just want to run off and get a title for yourself. A title? Do you know how hateful that sounds, Elena? Well, Lamar, sometimes even when someone says something hateful and even unkind, doesn't mean it's not true. Are you running? Are you running away after the old wine, the taste of the new? And are you running away from the Spirit of God to walk after the traditions of men? Are you deacon, which means servant? Okay, I'm back. So how's Maddie? Sicker than a dog. Honestly, I can't remember that girl ever having the flu. But at least she agreed to stay here so I could look after her, and I'm grateful for that. I'm also grateful that you were willing to come here so I could look after her. Thanks. Okay, where were we? Yeah, uh, transfiguration. Okay. The professor at the college, he said that we could pick any scripture that we like. Mm-hmm. And that one on the transfiguration is one of my favorites. Mine too. You know what? What? I think I'll write a song about it. You're kidding. Have you ever written anything before? Yeah. Now worship and writing, those two are my first loves. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Well, I guarantee you that's a talent we'll be using around the church. <laughs> but right now, we got to get back to preparing you for your yeah. class tomorrow. Okay. So, you were in the Matthew account. Mm -hmm. Okay, read me the first two verses. Okay. And it reads, And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Ooh, every time Ooh. I hear that, oh, glory. Okay, so you went to the concordance, mm -hmm. and you looked up transfigured. Yes. And you found that in the Greek, the word is metamorpho. Meta, to change the condition. Morpho, to form. Mm -hmm. So it means to change the form form of something. Metamorphosis, the butterfly. Mm -hmm. So what Jesus did is change the condition of his form from the earthly to the heavenly, from the natural to the supernatural. Ooh, preach girl. <laughs> hey, that'll put a jerk in you, won't it? In a heartbeat. Wow. Glory bumps from the top of your head to the tip of your tootsies. Please put the Tootsie Fish away. If you uh. insist. Okay, but this is what really gets me excited. Go back to the concordance. Mm -hmm. Look at transfigured again. Now, do you see any place where the word transfigured appears any place else in Scripture outside of the two um, places that we refer to as the transfiguration? Does it appear any place else? No. And you're right, unless you look up the word metamorpho, then it does appear elsewhere. Okay, so where? Let's try Romans 12 too, look it up. Okay. And this is why I love digging, digging, looking up these words in the original language because they just explode the meaning of a scripture. Okay, so, uh, so Romans 12 too, right? Mm -hmm. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove, which means to test or discern, what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. But that word be transformed is metamorpho. Be transfigured. Mm. Hmm. So let's translate this a different way. Be ye transfigured figured by the renewing of your mind. Go from the earthly to the heavenly, from the natural to the supernatural, by the renewing of the mind, and that's how you know the perfect will of God. Wow. 
Wow. Wow. Is that awesome? Yeah, you think? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? You guess it's Mabel Green. Oh. Hello. No speaking English. No, no, so sorry. She dead. She no more. Maybe you are not going to hang up that phone, are you? Really? Well, congratulations. Have they found a replacement? Okay. Well, listen, just to show you there are no hard feelings, how about if I take you out to lunch Friday? Yeah, I like that place. Noon? Great. Okay. See you then. Bye. Well, that sounded like good news. Ooh, they just promoted Mabel Green. Could get somebody to take her place. Wow. Oh. Oh, I feel it coming. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, I feel it coming. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's here. It's here. Yeah, it's a happy dance time before the Lord, before the Lord, before the Lord. It's a happy dance time before well, I tell you one thing, you don't have a lick of rhythm. I know I don't, but I'm telling you I'm happy. It's a happy dance time before the Lord, before the knock, Lord, knock. before the Lord. It's a happy dance time before pastor, the Lord. Pastor, pastor, huh? you won't believe this. What? Mm -hmm. the happy Deacon dance. Hall is leaving. It's a happy dance time before the Lord, before the Lord, before the Lord. Going to it's another church. Another church. Oh, it's a happy dance time before the Lord, before the Lord, before the Lord. I'm it's a happy serious. Dance time. I'm serious. No kidding? No kidding. I think I gotta sit down. What? Look. Deacon Hall overheard this deacon talking to him inside the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. The deacon promised him head deacon and assistant pastor if he'd come over to his church. So let me see if I understand this. He came into our sanctuary, the Lord's sanctuary, to steal our deacon? Hmm. No, I'm thinking. I thought it was God's thing to do the giving and the taking away. Well, what about thou should not steal? Well, go on a little further, next chapter over it says, he that taketh away a man is worthy of death. Yeah, but that's old covenant. Having said one, that might have been worth keeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so upset. I don't know, Lynn. I thought you may have been happy to see him get on down the road. Uh, yeah, you two do fight like a couple of cats and dogs. Y'all been in this house long enough to know that I have both cats and dogs? Yes, they get into a tiff once in a while, but ten minutes later, they're over there on that sofa all cuddled up. Hmm. So now, you ready to cuddle with Deacon Hall? <laughs> you ain't right. <laughs> you ain't See, right. that's a good one. <laughs> I can have that one spread on the rumor meal in about 30 minutes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you two comedians. I'm heart sick about this. Sick, sick, sick. Why? Well, let's see. First off, I've gotten right fond of the old poop, you know what I mean? Second, man, there's not much that'll make my day like jerking his chain. <laughs> but honestly, I've really come to admire the man. I have. I have. I think she's got a fever. <laughs> she's becoming delirious. Well, maybe, but at the same time, I'm kind of curious right now. What do you so admire about Deacon Hall now? Y'all don't know this about me, but I spent quite a few years at a couple churches that were so steeped in traditions. No, I'm talking about a rule book, rules and regs, 15 miles long. If you didn't do this, you weren't even saved. On the other hand, if you did do that, well, you know where you were going to end up. 
And the thing is, I remember how hard it was, how hard it was to break free all that mess. Hmm. So you felt like a traitor? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Or maybe even it made you feel kind of guilty. You think? But listen, I have watched Deacon Hall. I've been watching Deacon Hall. And you know the kinds of traditions he's been steeped in. His daddy, his daddy's daddy, and that daddy's daddy. Far back, and all of a sudden he's in the midst of nothing but change and turmoil around him. But I've watched him, and grumpy or not, he's hung in there. Yeah, he's definitely done that. He's done that. Except for now. Evidently, he decided not only to dump us, but Jeremiah's house too. Oh, now I am going to cry. Oh, I'm going to cry. I can still see his face. That day he came in my office to tell us that, you know, they were going to accept Terry into their home, into their home. And I remember the look on his face. It was sheer, unadulterated uh, surrender. It's all it was, surrender to the will of God. And that day, he taught me something. Oh, y'all, I'm sick, sick, sick. Look, there's some peach copper over there. Y'all go at it. I got to go take a walk. I just need the Lord to tell me how I'm supposed to handle this. All right. Well, there she goes out there with her animal babies. I don't understand it, but she seems to hear more clearly from the Lord when she's surrounded by feathers and fur. Yeah. Hey girl, what are you still doing here? Well, I went out and had lunch with my aunt and decided to come back and share some fresh information. Well, exactly what is that fresh information? Well now, considering this Deacon Hall thing and all, I mean, I know the timing's not great, but I knew you'd want to know this. You're sure I want to know this? <laughs> not really, but really. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> all right, give it to me. Well, she says she knows Mabel Green's replacement. And? And there's good news and there's bad news. Of course there is. <laughs> What's the good news? Well, she's a really hard worker and she will really be dedicated to her new job. Well, I don't know what the good news is about that. Mabel's a hard worker. She's really dedicated to her job and yet she could make an angel want to rip his wings right off his back. What's the bad news? Well, she's a Mabel on steroids. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm going for another walk. <laughs> Hey, Pastor Lynn, I didn't know you were here. Just came to get my hat. This hat? The one I've been praying over? I don't know what you're doing that for. I'm just fine. But we're not fine. You and me, we are not fine. And I think it's about time you sit down and we have a talk. About what? Okay, who's been talking about my business behind my back? Lamar, you're a leader in this church. It's not only your business, it's the church's business also. Well, if it's the church's business, I think they should have recognized my years of service and promoted me to head deacon when Spires left. You mean promoted you to a top leadership position when you were adamantly against the new pastor, when everybody else was excited about the change? Do you know what division that would have caused? Well, there's no division with the people at the new church. They're excited about me coming on as not only head deacon, 
but possibly even assistant pastor after a year or two. How about if we just skip past all the things that get you excited and focus a little more on the things that matter to God? Like, is it a white church or a black church? It happens to be a black church, why? Do they have any members that are white, Hispanic, Asian? I don't know. Okay, maybe not. You know, just recently I heard somebody say that the solution to a divided nation is a united church. And yet Sunday is the most segregated day of the week. Pastor, people want to go to church where they feel comfortable. Comfortable? Then that ought to shame all of us because where Jesus went, that wretched tool of torture called a cross, I don't think that was comfortable. But why did he go? Because he wanted all of his people, every tongue, every tribe, to be one. And the fruit of the price he paid for us ought to be on full display every Sunday in every house of worship. Pastor, I'm still going to speak with the people at the new church. Okay. And what about Jeremiah's house? You know, I thought about that. So I asked them if they'd be willing to build Jeremiah's house. And you know what? They said, sure. But do they have a heart for it? Or are they just sticking a hook in your mouth and reeling you in so you'll leave here and go with them? What, what does it matter as long as they get the job done? Oh, Lamar. I know this journey has been difficult on you. I do understand that. But you have to admit, God's done some wonderful things in this house that you've never seen before. Wonderful things. And we've all changed. We've all grown. I've grown. And the growth I've seen in you has blessed me beyond measure. I just don't understand why you'd want to turn your back on all that God's doing in this house. I don't understand. Pastor, I've made up my mind. I'm leaving. All right. I'm sorry. You are leaving me no choice. Even though it's breaking my heart to do this, I'm forced to release you from your responsibilities as deacon in this house because your heart is no longer with us. You know what, Pastor? That's fine. It's just another confirmation that it's time for me to go. I'll see you later. Father, Lamar is your son who you love, but you and I both know he's making a big mistake. So by the power of your Holy Spirit, Father, talk to your son. Talk to him. Cause his heart to become your heart. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. <laughs>